If you are an agency or a freelancer, sometimes you might want to share part of your data with your clients while still keeping your project management data centralized. And there have been solutions via automations that have been proposed in the past. However, sometimes you might use subtasks in Notion. And in this video, we are exploring how you can maintain the parent and subtasks relations between items when you create replicas of your data between your internal operations system and the public facing or the client facing system that you share with them. We are doing this using make and following a four step process, which you will see in the video, starting from retrieving all the tasks that you want to map to the public facing database to then create replicas of those tasks in that same database, storing the relations in a make data store, which is just a backend database in make, retrieving those relations and updating the public facing pages in Notion to make sure that the parent sub item relations remain intact exactly like they are in your internal database. The first step to understand about this setup is that we have two databases that are replicas of each other. So the tasks database in this example is the internal database. And you can see here that there is a parent item, for example, schedule kickoff meeting. And this parent item is composed of two sub items or sub tasks. And this is powered by Notion's relation property. So you can see subtask tool has the parent task relation populated with schedule kickoff meeting. And that is what gives the toggle shape here in the database view. And besides this internal database, there is also a tasks replica database that we will use as a fake public facing or client facing database where we want to create those items coming from the internal database while maintaining the relation between parent and sub items. Be aware that this is just one of the approaches that you might follow to achieve this end result. And we're using make to implement all of this. And we are using a simple replica database in make with just a task name, the parent and sub item relation property, as well as a text property to store the internal ID of the task. This is the internal ID from the tasks database that we use internally and we do not handle any logic in terms of filtering in this scenario in make because that's just a demonstration video focused on maintaining the relations between parent and sub items across databases the first step of this whole process is to retrieve all the tasks from the internal tasks database so this is a search objects module but depending on your use case you might need to use the watch database items module if you want the scenario in make to trigger whenever there is an updated database item or a new database item. So that will depend on your specific needs right here. However, I'm looking at the search objects running at regular intervals, but it could also be manual or whatever you like. And you can see here that I have my connection set up. The database ID is the internal database ID that I got from the URL of that database and there is no filter. And here, if you have many tasks, in this case, I want to increase the maximum number of results per execution cycle. For this case, I just have eight tasks, so I'm going to keep it as 10. After that, there is a router, which I can find under flow control. And the router allows me to branch out the scenario into different routes. In the first route, we are creating a replica. So this will create a new task in the replica database and the parent and sub item relation is not going to be populated yet that is handled by the subsequent routes but the only properties populated for the sake of this example are the name so the task name and the internal id which are mapped from the search objects module but i retrieve all the tasks and one by one they get created in this create a database item module where the database ID is the tasks replica database ID that I entered manually here, taken from the URL. And then, as you can see, I map the name field and the internal ID property. The other two are empty. Next up here, there is a filter that says if the parent task ID exists. And this parent task ID is coming from the search objects module, so the internal task. And it is a property that I can find here under the parent task. If I open that, I can find the ID. If this is populated, then I want the scenario to continue. And with the data store module, which you can find here 
by typing data store and it looks like this. I've used the add replace record module to add a new module in the data store. And the data store is a simple database that is stored in make so that it is not visible to the end user. And in here, we're gonna have two simple fields because when you set up a data store, you also set up a data structure. So which fields you wanna include in that data store. And in this case, I only set up two fields. One is replica ID of type text, and one is parent internal ID of type text. The replica ID gets data from the replica database item ID, as you can see here when I hover over the database item ID. And the parent internal ID gets the parent task ID that I showed you before. And this essentially is a match between what's the replica database item and what's the parent item of that replica from the internal database. We will use this data in the subsequent routes to search for the specific items and then add that relation. Whenever you create a data store in Make, you can find that data store under the dedicated section, data store, and the data structure under data structures, because for each data store, you need to have a data structure. So the first route doesn't have any filter. It continues every time because all the tasks get created in this case. The second route, however, only continues for the last item in the execution cycle. So there is a filter that says where total number of bundles equal to, that's a numeric operator, bundle order position. You can find these two items here. This is total number of bundles, and this is bundle order position. And the reason why I apply this filter is because I want this route to only happen after all the replica tasks are created. So that's why I only want it to run once at the end of all the replica tasks, because that will allow me to retrieve the parent sub relation. And the first action in the second route is a data store action, that is search records. And in here, I'm gonna retrieve all the records from the parent item data store without any filters applied. Next up, I will use an array aggregator, which you can find under the flow control options. And the array aggregator allows me to group data by the parent internal ID, because sometimes a parent item can have multiple sub items. And so this allows me to retrieve the key and the record data from the data store. And then I want to group that by the parent internal ID, which I map here. After I aggregate that data, I get an array and I want to split out, open up the array so that I can use those values later on in the subsequent modules. And that is why I'm using an iterator, which you can find always under flow control. And the iterator takes the array from the previous module, which is the array aggregator. Because when you open up the array, you will see that there is the key that is a unique value that make generates automatically for the data store records. And then there is the record collection that contains the replica ID and the dedicated parent task ID. So I want to unpack that with the iterator to then search for the replica parent item. Here I'm using a search objects module from the Notion app. And when you open this, you will see the database ID is from the tasks replica database that I'm using. And I'm filtering for internal ID, which is this property in the database. Text, because that's a type text, equal the parent internal ID mapped from the iterator, which you can see here once you unpack the collection, you can find parent internal ID. And this allows me to get the ID of the replica task. Once that is done, I can then update the sub item replica to be related to the parent item. So here I'm using an update database item module. This is the tasks replica database ID. And in here you can find the database item ID is from the replica ID from the iterator, which is right here. And the parent item is the page ID from the search objects module, which is right before this module. And finally, I will delete all the records. And this also has a filter and it happens only for the last bundle. So this is exactly the same filter as before, because once all of this is done, I do not need those records in data store anymore because the relations are already set up. And so I want to clean it up by deleting all the records that you can find here as a module. So let's run this automation and uh, let's look at what tasks we are looking to transfer. So if you look at the internal task database, there are four tasks, two of which are parent tasks. And each parent task has 
two subtasks right here. So we want to maintain this structure exactly in the same fashion in the replica database. So let's go back to the replica database and let's run this automation once. And you can see here, all the tasks are retrieved. One replica at a time is created. The data store records are created, retrieved, all the mapping is done and all the data store records are deleted. So let's go back to Notion in the task replica database. I can see that all the mapping happened correctly. There are four tasks and I can see schedule kickoff meeting is a parent task. And if I open this parent task, I can see two subtasks within that task, which I can also find inside the page. And that is how you can maintain relations between items when you sync an internal database to a public facing or a client facing database in Notion. There are for sure other options. This is one of them. For any questions or comments, drop them down below in the comment section. You can find relevant links in the description of this video. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.